What's it like to see a Sasquatch? You know, a lot of people, when they tell and share their experiences about seeing these things, they um, it's usually the same descriptive. You know, they tell what they were doing, where they were, um, their back history of uh, where they've been, what they've done in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, hiking and stuff. And um, they talk about you know, how terrifying it was. They couldn't believe what they're looking at. One thing I notice uh, is common, which is really weird, is, is a lot of people have seen one of these things with their friend and their closing statement is, we never spoke of this moment ever again. That's kind of odd, isn't it? That's kind of really weird. I don't know what triggers that, but it's a common one. But more so, I don't want to, I'm not going to here to talk about what it's like to see one, like stand there looking at it. But what really happens after you see one of these things is there's a lot more to it than just saying, you know, I saw a Sasquatch. I saw a Bigfoot, <laughs> you know. You know, for it's. I think it varies what happens to people after they see them, depending on that individual. You know, you know, possibly it could be somebody who lives their life in the city, 99.9 percent of the time, and they decide to go on a road trip somewhere. And I've seen one of these things run across the highway, or or down there on the side of the highway, or or whatever, on or a rural road, and they've seen one, don't know what it is, can't explain it, and then they get a inquisitive about the topic start looking into it and share their experience and it doesn't really overall affect their lives overly too much and then uh you know there's other people i spoke to you know that past girlfriend of mine years ago or her dad was a longtime faller in port renfrew on the west coast of vancouver island and she mentioned to me that he's seen one and i asked him about it and uh, he just flat out said you know yeah yeah i seen one of those things i wouldn't mind uh finding out where they winter and watching them or something you know, it didn't really concern him at all. It's like business as usual. That's another, that was an odd, I've seen a few people kind of have that, have that demeanor after seeing one of these things. And then, um, and then there's the other people, there's another flavor of reaction from other people who see these things and it absolutely changes everything for them. You know, it changes everything as it should. I didn't ask to see one of these things. Um, if I could go back in time, would I not have seen one of these? Would I prefer to have not have seen one of these things? Mm, in some ways, yes, but in other ways, no, obviously, because I feel that we all deserve a fair crack at knowing what's out here. We, we all deserve a fair crack at knowing what's really going on on this planet, um, not only for ourselves, but Potentially, let's just say you live rural and you have children playing out in the yard or getting a little older and they want to go running off in the forest with the pelicans by themselves. Or um, your girlfriend, your wife, family members, friends, anybody. I mean, everybody deserves a crack at knowing the honest truth about what's going on in their surroundings. And they deserve the chance of being able to make a choice of how they want to live their life, whether or not they're going to let their children go running around right there where some of these things may be um, seen commonly present day and in the past you know so there's that's another way of looking at it but for me you know every single thing about our entire present day existence changes and there's no going back once you see one of these things and you are forced to accept the reality of the existence of these things every single thing changes everything you know for me it's it yeah the topic can make me angry it has made me angry in the past i think some of my anger comes from so many good honest people being discredited and their characters being destroyed it's such horse shit that's such bullshit and that make that can really make me angry obviously another part big part of the reason why i'm here but uh you know for me or i mean many other people that still persist to go into the outdoors whether it be for making a living or because they're passionate about their hunting and fishing, you will never, ever be able to go in the woods ever, ever again without your senses being overly heightened, you know? I used to be able to go hike into the woods and kick back and relax and fall asleep. <laughs> Big deal. I don't sleep in the woods by myself anymore. I don't, I don't pull up, a, you know, I don't lay under a tree and fall asleep anymore. Not a freaking chance. And um, do I feel like my life's threatened? I don't feel like my life's threatened when I'm in the woods, but the sad reality is 
uh, I can't, I'll never ever be able to re relax, get to the point of being relaxed out in the woods ever again. That's gone. It's been taken away from me and that'll never come back. It's physically impossible. Because, you know, normally when you're in the woods, especially a guy like me and many other people like me, um, you know, you, whether you're hunting or guiding or fishing or guiding for fishing or whatever, um, you usually, your focus is 100% on that particular activity you're in for the day. But now, now, unfortunately, your focus is probably 75% on the activity you're doing and 25% plus on listening for abnormal sounds around you. And you're looking for abnormal, you're looking for signs of something else when meanwhile you're supposed to be 100% focused on this activity or that game animal or where you're going or what you're doing there. But the entire time from, from that day on, you are focused on other sounds that you normally wouldn't be listening for. You're focused on seeing the sign in the forest of something that you're not normally looking for. You're not only looking for bear tracks or deer or elk tracks, you're looking for a sign of other tracks and you can't stop yourself. You'll never be able to stop yourself from looking and watching your back in a way ever again. Never, ever, ever again. And that kind of sucks in a way, you know? Um, my own, when it comes time for me to do my personal hunting, I prefer to hike up in the remote mountains where nobody goes, where there's no roads, no logging, like where I am right here in, um, and I like to go hunting that big mature timber. And uh, I, it usually takes me a couple hours of hiking in the dark to get where I want to go. And I'm being straight up honest, um, it's not a relaxing time for me. You know, the whole time driving to my spot, that seed is in the back of my head. It'll never, ever go away. It's there for life until I'm dead. And it eats you sometimes. Um, it can mess with your, with your, with your confidence at times. And... Um, and you know you're in your truck and it's pitch black and you're getting out of your truck and you're putting your pack on you're getting your rifle and off you go by yourself and um and and there's a little voice in your head that says mine does it says it's like god not today just don't just leave me alone i don't need this shit. i don't want to be you know yelled at shrieked at um chased escorted out of here by something very very intimidating i'm just not into it and um you got to think about it whether you whether or not you accept the facts about these beings or not just erase your make your mind go blank for a second and just picture this picture the person who's told you about these things or picture yourself even and just picture being in the woods and um and knowing these things are around you can't predict where or when they're going to be it's out of your control 100 percent um there's no authority known to modern times that is actively informing the population about these things you're left alone to figure it out on your own and as you're trying to figure out on your own you're trying to get past um the idiots you know um sadly sadly in in your circles in your neighborhood in your society in your groups of friends there's probably going to be more people than not who are going to be uh non-stop making jokes about you and humiliating you and laughing at you and um either to your face or behind the scenes and it just adds to the confusion and the it just and the discomfort potentially you know i mean for me now obviously i mean look at me i'm sharing this shit online with the planet i'm over it i'm over the uh i'm over the insecure end of my experience i don't give a shit what anybody thinks obviously but um and you know and, and just for a quick pointer for all of you people who have been humiliated belittled or or you know suppressed and shut in your mouth about this topic if you have people like that in your circle just kick them out and don't give them any more time. That's what I do, and it's made my life way more happier and easier. Just, you know, if, if there's people out there who you thought were your friends and they bel belittle you and, and uh, run you down behind your back, you'll find out soon enough and just get them. Just get them to the side and just skyrocket up that direction and they'll, you'll leave them d down there. I've done it numerous times. It's easy. But anyway, but that's... that's possibly uh, one of my main points I want to get across to you people out there who are curious of these things a lot of you people who are active in actually you know a lot of people who are actually active in trying to have an encounter with one of these things I don't know why anybody would want that I mean uh, there's enough facts and evidence out there to confirm it for you now believe it or not we'll get into that later on but um 
you know, and I do have some friends of mine who you know of, you know, their names, you know, and they have lifelong, um, they have lifelong encounters with these things. And it's almost in a way, you know, a friend of mine, Scott Carpenter, you know, as he says, these things, once they know, you know about them, um, they almost make a point of messing with you, <laughs> you know, more. And uh, some people like Scott, Scott's having dozens and dozens of encounters, where he hunts, where he lives, where he goes. Um, he's a brave, brave man. If you're going back out there, he's got these things on video cameras and still cameras numerous times. But, uh, you know, another example, you know, Les Stroud, he went to Scott's place, um, stayed there for a week, and he actually had a very abnormal encounter with these things in the night. And still today, he goes home to his home in Canada, and these things are dropping stuff off at his house, whether it be, in fact, you know, dropping off different various items around his home for him to find. It's just a really weird, odd thing. But um, am, am I scared? Does it, has it changed me to be scared or nervous? You know, you'll notice I've got a gun. I got a, I've got a loaded Magnum. This is a 300 short mag. I got a loaded Magnum with me more times than I don't, you know, under the advice of some other friends of mine. You know, you might, hopefully you'll listen to David Plods and listen to uh, a lot of his facts of things that are going on on the planet. And, um, and that, can, that can possibly, the, the information that he's sharing with the world uh, should be taken in and taken very seriously. And it can have an effect on how you govern yourself when you go into the woods. So um, those two people are, are two names I would strongly suggest you guys you guys look into and listen to what they have knowledge they have to share with you because it's, it can be very, very helpful. But, but for the most part, you know, um, once you're forced to accept the fact that these things are real and getting back to how much everything changes, I mean, it, it makes you question everything. You know, there's a lot of people and individuals and groups out there who instantly are outed in a way, you know. Um, there's people, there's people and groups out there who are really, really, really putting a big effort into keeping all of you convinced that these things are some kind of an animal, some kind of a, an ape, or a, you know, a, a monkey or a, a gorilla, when that is 100% false and misleading, and they're lying, they're flat out lying to you. And there's um, there's numerous individuals out there who are being rewarded and paid to ensure that you. Can you continue to be convinced or believe that that these things are an animal, a simple animal like an, uh, a monkey or a gorilla? And uh, two particular people in main mention, one's called uh, Mel Dumb and the other one's called Money. And they are being rewarded nonstop to never, ever, ever swerve off the public, the public uh, delivery of these things are an animal. And you know, going on that, I'm getting a little sidetracked from talking about what it's like to see one of the things, but just so you guys know, if these beings were animals, if they're a simple, if they're a simple monkey or gorilla, myself and hundreds of people like me would have one of these things heads on a platter or on a game tramp or on a game camera multiple times. Don't kid yourself. And um, the previous and present day um, indigenous hunters to each continent would have these things teeth on a necklace and their skulls underneath candles a long time ago. Trust me. I mean, um, every single animal known to us has been harvested by a human being and, and before firearms. I mean, think about it. Indigenous people harvested whales without firearms. They harvested grizzly bears and cougars and wolves without firearms long before the Europeans came to North America. Um, if these beings were a simple animal such as a monkey or a gorilla, the indigenous hunters of each continent would have their teeth around their neck on a necklace and they'd have their skulls underneath candles a long, long time ago. And they don't, okay? Um, but getting back to how these, this changes everything, you, you know, earlier in other videos I've mentioned that you know, this is the moment you understand and accept, are forced to accept the fact these things are real, the majority of the population gets dumb real quick in your eyes, you know, and there's just no way out of it. You know, you'll see groups of people laughing at the top for lungs and ridiculing these things and people that have these experiences and those people just are, 
it's just mind boggling how clear how clearly misled these people are. The majority of us are, are being misled. It's, it's, uh, it's a little mind boggling, you know? Um, but overall, you know, just the fact that you'll never ever be able to go into the woods again and feel the same. Uh, you'll never be able to ra relax ever again if you can continue to persist in going into the woods alone, especially, uh, especially if you have children um, you know, knowing what I know now, I don't know, you know, letting kids play in the backyard, living rural without that. I think that'd be pretty stressful for me. It's not really fair. It's not fair that the people aren't fed the true, honest facts, mainstream, you know, whether it be in school, universities, um, from the Ministry of Environment in Canada, you know, the Game Fishing Game Department in the U.S. Um, it's, it's really, really, it's, it's just unfair. It's real tragic fact that they are not going to acknowledge these things publicly and they're not going to share the facts publicly with the population why are they doing that I'm having a clue do you think it's simply because of money in, in the logging industry not a chance not a chance it's far bigger than that um, I believe that if these things are acknowledged mainstream there is a lot of things that we've been raised to believe that are that will instantly unravel whether that be religion whatever that is um, our our history our true history our story as a species um, I think that if these things are acknowledged there's going to be a hell of a lot of answers to be answered to the to the majority of the population that the people who may have the answers don't want us to have and that is the number one reason for certain why we're not being fed the true honest facts about these things and it's really unfortunate it's really, it's just, it really, really sucks. Everything changes. You'll never go back to how things were previous before you were forced to accept the existence of these things. Um, you probably lose some friends over this topic if you uh, persist in coming out publicly like I have. But what do you do? What are you supposed to do after you see one of these things? Be terrified of your friends and your family and your, and your coworkers, your, your community? No, that's the wrong thing to do. Um, but it's unfortunate the majority of people that have these experiences they're terrified to share it because of being ridiculed belittled or hammered into the ground what are the benefits to a human being to make up that they saw one of these things you tell me you tell me how any person in any community is going to benefit from making up and sharing uh, that they saw a Sasquatch there's no benefit there's nothing good that comes of it nothing don't kid yourself. There's nothing, nothing good about seeing one of these things and sharing it with your friends and community. But, you know, a lot of, most people um, insist on keeping that secret. Me? No. No, it's not fair. It's not fair to all the people that have seen one of these things. It's not fair to the people who haven't seen one but are curious. It's not fair. You know, when, when these things are, are present, when they're present, where they're present, um, that those that information should be f shared with the public, and it's not. But I'm going to do the best I can to share it with you guys, um, and that's just the right thing to do. Um, if has it cost me some friends? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. How could it cost me friends? Because if somebody considered me a friend, or if I had somebody who I considered a friend previous. And then they heard me come on YouTube and come out live about these beings and they decided to be weirded out by me, not my friend. Well, they weren't my friend to begin with, so there's nothing missed there, right? And um, I can assure you, all you people who have had experiences with these things and you're nervous about sharing it, well, you can look, go back in the history of my YouTube channel to that first video where I finally caved into all you and I shared uh, what I knew. And since then, the amount of people that have come up to my face and laughed in my face publicly about this topic, zero. The amount of people I know in my community who have contacted me to laugh at me or belittle me or humiliate me in any way to my face or via an email or phone call or text, zero, no one, okay? So I would like to think that the majority of the people who are listening to me sharing these experiences are respecting me enough and, under, and you know respect me enough as an outdoorsman and honest person that I'm not bullshitting, I'm not making it up 
if, you know, business-wise, I'd, I'd, I'd more have everything to lose than I would have to gain by sharing these, these stories with everybody and standing, and standing up and not backing down. I mean, how am I gaining from this, <laughs> you know? But there is, I'll guarantee you, there's one thing that's being gained is respect for the people who have seen these things and building up their self-confidence again. That's definitely happening for what I'm doing and for what many other people are doing as well. But, uh, you know, aside from just seeing one of these things, um, just take note. It's not a fun experience. There's nothing good about it. And it changes everything. It changes every single... It changes the way you look at society. It changes the way you think about the knowledge and the history that is being shared with us, mainstream. Um, you question everybody. That's a lot of questioning. That's a lot of wondering. That's a lot of thought. <laughs> you know. It is funny. I was talking... I was sharing... Uh, I talked to a few people who are very, very well versed in knowledge of these things. And uh, I was telling a couple of people the other day, I said, man, maybe I missed the boat. You know, maybe I missed the boat in life. If I could only just have been, uh, if I could have only just been content to uh, have an hourly paying job, work to 65, be obsessed with the sport, drink my face off, be happy in two weeks of, of uh, holidays a year. And uh, not give any of this shit any any attention and never question anything and, and just kind of cruise along to the end and die. But that'd be kind of boring, wouldn't it? Oh, wait. Uh, one more mention here. I, I've, I've been tossing this. I have to make this mention, okay? And you understand why? Um, you know, what I've been doing and a few other individuals who you have heard of are doing is we're just trying to get the credibility back to this topic. We're getting, trying to get the respect back to this topic. And it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a tough battle because you have numerous people who are making a mockery of the topic. You have numerous people that are basically being paid to, uh, to keep the true facts under wraps. And you have other people who have massive, massive exposure to millions of people who are somewhat playing that role as well. And um, it kind of bothers me in a way. It's almost insulting in a way. I find it more insulting to my grandfather. I keep going back to my grandfather, you know. You can see him here getting medals pinned on him from the Queen for jumping into that sheet metal tube full of bombs uh, to fly through hell so that we all could live the lives we're living. And, uh, you know, I got to say this. You know, I'm a fan of Joe Rogan's podcast. I love listening to intelligent people he has on there. But you know what? When a, when a person like Joe has such a following, has, he has so many people listening to him, and then he goes and makes a statement like this. Like, what do you, you know, here's my direct message to you, Joe. What are you doing that for? Like, think about what you're doing. You're misleading the masses, um, and you are basically directly belittling, humiliating, and insulting people like, like my grandfather here. And uh, he, if, if you wanted to put you up against him and see who which one could get the most chicks in their time I will guarantee you the girls wouldn't even look at you dude because first off I mean I've, I've guided hundreds of people like you and I will guarantee it that you are too scared to go in the woods without somebody holding your hand and that's a fact my grandfather over here he jumped in a sheet metal tube full of bombs and flew through walls of frickin flame and lead and shrapnel and drop those bombs and survived. And he did that so that guys like you could be little and humiliate him to large audiences later on and make money, a lot of money. And uh, how fair is that? So because people like Joe and other people with big exposures, large exposures to people are making these absolute insulting uh, misinformed statements about these beings, which directly belittles and humiliates people who've had these honest encounters, um, now it's left to guys like me to uh, try to do the damage control and set the shit straight, the bullshit that they're sharing, you know. So, sorry, Joe, but when it comes to being a stud of an individual and a credible man, if you were uh, the same age as my grandfather back in the day, he would have outstudded you in, in a heartbeat. And that man had a face-to-face -face encounter with a Sasquatch. So anyway... Hopefully this lends a little more credibility to uh, to what's going on out there. Hopefully this helps a lot of you who are inquisitive about this topic a little more and understand a little more. And uh, but just let just.
hopefully you'll understand more than you won't that um, probably 99.9% .9 of people that have had encounters with these, thing with these things did not ask for it. <laughs>